Can you describe a bit about your business where you were selling advertising marketing services? I've been hired to write a jingle and was wondering if you had any advice. Daniel, it's just something you got to do over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And you start to get a sense for what works and what doesn't work. And then you just, you kind of build up like a, like a skill set. It, it's kind of like, it's an art and a science. And I started writing radio copy way back in, I don't know when it was, 2002, no, no 2003, maybe something like that. And I just did it because I thought our ad agency sucked. And I, I, that's what I told the guy I was working for as a consultant at the time. I said, listen, your ad agency's garbage. And let's just let me write the ad. Trust me, just one week, let me write the ad. I can do a better job than this fancy ad agency that you've hired in Los Angeles. And it was call to action ads. So you can just determine how well the ad worked just by how many times the phone rang. So it was very easy to quantify. Sure enough, I wrote the ad and it worked a lot better. <laughs> and that was it. That, that was the beginning of uh, the first kind of little business I had that was relatively profitable. It was just that consulting business where I was doing media buying. And then, then I'd, I'd buy radio and, ad, and uh, TV spots for businesses because I had a lot of the relationships. You know, I had national accounts with Clear Channel and Comcast and I don't even know if they're still around now. I'm, I'm assuming they are, but I had national accounts. So I, I'd get the spots at a discount and then I'd, I'd negotiate the price. And, um, and then I'd tell the, the client, you know, where they should run the ad at the afternoon drive, morning drive. I get them what they call rotators. Anyone that's in the business knows what I'm talking about. And then I would uh, write those ads, but, and then I started producing TV commercials uh, for some of the, the, the people as well. But uh, it, it's just trial and error, and you got to just do it over and over and over and over again. Start listening to ads and kind of reverse engineering. So if you listen to a call to action ad on the radio, as an example, just listen to how many times they announce the phone number. And you'll notice they'll announce it at least three times. And I always thought that wasn't enough. I always like to just do overkill. But see, I used to run 60s. I didn't like 30s. I it, it, so 30 second commercials compared to 60s, 60 second commercials, because although 60s might be double the price, I always thought you would get more than double the phone calls because you're able to, to say a lot more. And then you're able to give the phone number an, an appropriate number of times. And I always just I always ran 60s. I always encourage the clients to do that. So my point is usually they'll mention it three times. I used to like to mention it four to five times. And just through my experience, that always worked a lot better. That would drive more calls. And But that's something that I had to figure out just by trial and error. But you can start just by listening to one of those call to action ads and just reverse engineering it. And then just trying to improve on that, right? It's the same thing when I started producing the TV show in Medellin, which was the kind of the precursor to the YouTube channel. Right, we had that uh, reality show that I that I produced in in Medellin where we were flipping the houses. It's just like an HGTV show, and I went and pitched the local network there called Tele Medellin on this show. And I don't know how I did it, but I got them to green light it. That you know, you got a Spanish speaking market, and I'm a gringo that's never produced a TV show in his life. I don't speak Spanish, and I was not only going to produce it, direct it but I was also going to be in the show. <laughs> so figure that one out. Uh, most people obviously never would have tried, but for me, it, it just kind of made sense. But my point is that's how I figured out how to produce a, a TV show that people actually wanted to watch is I would sit there and I would watch reality show and it was brutal, but I'd watch reality show after reality show after reality show. And I would reverse engineer the editing. So every scene I would stop and I would say, okay, why are they shooting the scene like this? Why are they using three cameras here instead of two? Why are they cutting every four seconds instead of 10 seconds? You know, how are they doing this? And then I, I figured it out and then I implemented it into the first few episodes. And as the show, we did 13 episodes total. 
And as we, you know, got into those mid episodes, I started to become pretty darn good. And uh, I would argue that especially some of our latter episodes were just as good, just as entertaining as a, a reality show, one of these house flipping shows you'd see on HGTV. And I was doing it with a f fraction of the budget. <laughs> I mean, a fraction. And so uh, it's the same thing, though. Same thing. Just find out what's working well, reverse engineer it to figure it out, do it over and over again, and improve on it.